You're listening to KRUULP 100.1 FM, the voice of Fairfield, Iowa, and beyond the Midwest's only solar-powered radio station. My name is Dennis Mundy. My show Speaking Freely. And my guest today, who is part of a series I'm doing on uh, coffee, is Anthony Nguyen. Uh, and he is from Vietnam originally, uh, now living in Sweden. And uh, I was recently in uh, Scandinavia, and I met uh, Nguyen in... Uh, in, in Gothenburg, Sweden, and uh, he has been a roaster uh, and uh, also a barista, which he is working at now, and uh, coffee, uh, one who acquires coffee. And uh, I consider him one of the top uh, baristas I met while in Europe, and I met some of the best people there. Uh, he's tremendously knowledgeable. He owned a roasting company in Germany and uh, is currently at Alchemy uh, in Gothenburg, Sweden, uh, which I consider to be one of the best cafes I have gone to in Europe, and I've gone to dozens and dozens of the top cafes, especially in uh, Scandinavia. So, Anthony, uh, thank you so very much for coming on my show today. Thank you very much uh, for the introduction, Dennis. Right. Um, very nice to meet you today. So. All right. Thank you. And uh, let us, our listeners know, uh, in Vietnam, uh, I assume that's where you first became uh, interested in coffee and the coffee business. Uh, tell us uh, how you got involved in coffee. Yeah, um, I started to work with the coffee in 2008 in Ho Chi Minh City. Um, and at that moment, we are working for the uh, Australian uh, coffee company train. It's named Gloria Zin Coffee. Mm -hmm. um, so. so at that time, we using a little bit uh, dark roast coffee that uh, using some blend between the Arabica and Robusta coffee. Okay, so at that time you were using the darker roast and, and throughout much of the world now, dark roast or Italian roast is still very popular. Tell us about the, the difference about between these darker roasts and what's now coming more into the coffee industry, these lighter roasts, which I know that you are very interested in. Yes, um, in the dark roast coffee, uh, actually we have uh, lower acidity, and you have imbrie a lot of uh, bitterness in the coffee as well. Um, and in the dark roast coffee, you often uh, get the burn test in the coffee, mm -hmm. um, so which is not uh, supposed to be in the good cup of coffee. Mm -hmm. So you're and getting you're getting in the dark roast. More bitterness and more uh, and uh, less acidity, but more bitterness and uh, and a and a taste of the roast itself as opposed to the bean. Is that right? Yes, it is. And uh, in the light roast coffee, so we uh, have a little bit more higher acidity, and you allow to uh, feeling the the sweetness a little bit higher compared to the uh, medium roast and the uh, dark roast coffee. And it's also you can test a lot of character like uh, citrus, you can get a little bit like lemon, you can get a little bit of uh, strawberry sometimes, mm -hmm. and sometimes you can rest like very complex acidity uh, such as like blueberry, raspberry, and we still make the coffee uh, considered in the high quality coffee. So, so the lighter roast, uh, uh, which is uh, being promoted very much now by what they're calling the uh, third wave in coffee, which is uh, started, I think, in, in, in Portland, Oregon, and then uh, is, is worldwide now, are these lighter roasts, which uh, you can distinguish more flavors and taste from the coffee bean itself. Now, when you prepare lighter roasts, are they prepared in the same way as the darker roast in, in terms of do you go through an espresso machine? Do you use what's called pour over? Uh, is there a specific way to prepare the lighter roast uh, in terms of once the beans are, are roasted and you're actually making the coffee itself? Yes. Um, actually, in the light roast coffee, you can using it for the pour over coffee. Mm -hmm. uh, and the one that we're using at uh, a Kemitan cafe right now is the V60 filter coffee, which is from uh, Japan. Um, and with the V60 uh, filter, 
you can using the light rotoscopy and you can control the uh, the temperature du during the time that you brewing and you can control the ratio for example like, sem for example how many water you want to uh, get into the coffee mm -hmm. and how long time you want to uh, attract uh, the coffee right and and, Anthony, and uh, yeah. that's a yeah go ahead and uh, that's the, uh, something that we call uh, ruin profile and in different ruin profile they can be suitable for different level rows of coffee and uh, it create more flavor mm -hmm. and and, and uh, getting back to your experience uh, in Vietnam uh, do they actually grow coffee beans in Vietnam are there coffee farms in Vietnam uh, yes um, I think uh, right now Vietnam is the second export cafe in the world. Wow. However, uh, yeah. that's the uh, is the setback is like we only uh, uh, export a lot of robusta coffee. And what type so, of coffee is that? Is that dark or light? Uh, no, robusta coffee is a variety coffee. Oh. So we have like two different variety that oh. you can consume. Uh, um, that's the Arabica is have a uh, higher quality bean and the Robusta is like lower quality bean. And uh, right now in Vietnam, we using, we export a lot of Robusta. Um, in many years before, we are the one of the biggest uh, ex, um, the Robusta export in the world. Mm -hmm. And right now uh, in Vietnam, uh, the billboard and the farmer start to understand it about the quality of the coffee and uh, we uh, try to improve amount of the Arabica coffee export out of the world. Uh -huh. So and where right now uh, do, does the best uh, uh, high quality coffee come from Africa and South America? Yes it is. What countries uh, do you like best for importing coffee? Um, in general, I like the coffee uh, come from Ethiopia. So, what often you can find the uh, citrus acidity. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, and uh, the Kenya coffee also always have high quality. And however, sometimes uh, you can find a lot of good coffee come from Panama and come from Colombia as well. Mm -hmm. And and and. Uh uh, then you went from uh, Vietnam to, I believe, Germany, where you had a business where you were roasting coffee. How did that take place, and what is that business like? Um, so in 2015, um, I and uh, some of my friends, who we uh, cooperation together to open the uh, the small specialty uh, coffee, mm -hmm. and we also do some roasting in in uh, this. Cafe as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, where was that in Germany? Uh, it was in uh, Dusseldorf. Dusseldorf. And yeah. tell us about what's the process of roasting coffee like? What are the roasters like? Assume our, our listeners don't know anything about how a coffee bean is roasted. What are the beans like when they mm -hmm. come? Do you let them dry first? Do you roast them? What's that process like? Uh huh. The processing of the uh, roasting coffee, we can uh, uh, divide for three phases. Uh, the first phase uh, that we can talk about is drying phase. Uh, and that's it, uh, when the coffee uh, from the green bean um, changing to the yellow. And at that time, it's about like four to five minutes. Uh, so you, you roast it, oh, stop saying. So you, what color does it start at, and then you roast it for four or five minutes, it becomes yellow, but what, what, when you first put it in, what color is the coffee bean? Uh, at the start, uh, the coffee bean have the yellow in the ring. Okay. And yeah. then they start to change to the yellow, okay. and then they change to brown. And uh, in the specialty coffee, we roast the coffee uh, to... Uh, after first rack and no longer second rack. Mm -hmm. And then, and then is it? So, uh, uh, so you said uh, 
it's uh, uh, it, the coffee bean actually cracks at some point? Mm, yes. Uh, um, the coffee bean can be uh, roast during like uh, about 8 uh, minutes 30 to 12 minutes. Uh, depend on uh, different uh, roasting profile um, and uh, depend on the uh, the density of the bean and the quality of green bean as well um, and when the coffee achieved from about 198 to 205 degree uh, the coffee start to get uh, uh, the sound like breaks it like pop 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 and right. this uh, Right. This is the time that coffee we we call it first rack, and uh, right after the first rack happening, right after so the, the first crack that the, you're saying the word is crack, the crack of the coffee bean. Yeah, yeah. So right after that yeah. happens, then what? Uh, so uh, the coffee, the flavor start to uh, to, to explode, uh, mm -hmm. and then you have like uh, coffee at that time. The coffee already getting uh, roasted. And the flavor is start to losing after uh, first rack. All right. So after the first, I know it in coffee beans, there's a first crack in there. Sometimes there's a second crack. But what you're saying is after the first crack, that's when the flavor of the actual coffee bean is best. And is that when in specialty coffee or what they call third wave coffee, lighter roast, is that when you stop roasting uh, uh, a light roast coffee? Mm -hmm. So actually, uh, right after the first rack, so uh, the roster also checking the uh, after the first rack, we can uh, checking the development time of the bean. So some of coffee you want to develop like about one minute, some coffee you want to develop into two minutes. So um, and during that development time, the sugar uh, content in the coffee uh, will changing, uh, and that we called uh, cam caramelizer uh, okay. phase oh, yeah. and uh, at that time the bean stunting from the yellow to the raw one and, and this allow uh, to uh, to you create the most uh, sweetness in a cup right. because so, a lot of sugar create during this time so so when you when you uh, are making light roast coffee approximately how many minutes how much time does it take uh, for uh, the roasting uh, that's it very depend on the uh, machine that you're using depend on the right uh, how big the machine how big is the uh, uh, the volume of the the roasting how many kilo that you're roasting but in general the roasting can be uh, around from 10 minutes to 14 minutes for the uh, okay for the uh, uh, good coffee good good so for lighter roast now for Darker roast coffee, uh, which is also you know sold in big quantity, and a lot of people uh, still drink that. Uh, the the darker roast, do they wait till the second crack of the coffee bean? Uh, yet it is um, actually uh, most of the coffee that come out to the second rack, the coffee bean already roasted uh, too much, and they start to losing the flavor. They start to losing the acidity. And uh, the coffee is roasted uh, too much, and it become higher bitterness in the cup. Right. Well, uh, for those just tuning in, you're listening to KRUU LP 100.1 FM. My name is Dennis Ramundi. My guest today, Anthony Nguyen, uh, from Sweden, originally from Vietnam, uh, who is a expert coffee roaster, barista, and uh, very knowledgeable about all areas of the coffee industry. And what we've been talking about is uh, to this point is, is uh, coffee roasting and how uh, the trend now, which is called the third wave of coffee, is uh, going from the darker roast to the lighter roast. But So if somebody, uh, Anthony, <clears throat> goes to, say, Starbucks, which is worldwide now, and they get a cup of coffee, uh, what most people are used to is getting a darker roast. And uh, what you're saying is that if you drink a darker roast of coffee, you don't get much taste of the darker of the coffee bean and all the different potential flavors that are there, but you're getting more just a burnt taste 
but some people enjoy that because that's all they've ever experienced, and they have to learn a little bit more to acquire an appreciation of what the lighter roast is. Is that right? Uh, yes, it is. So why? Uh, I, yeah, go ahead. Uh, I think it's so many uh, people nowadays is used to the way uh, that uh, the darker roast coffee, um, and that's. Let me say this is like kind of traditional. And uh, we used to the traditional. So we used to the coffee have to be have bitterness in it. We used to the coffee have to be like have the roasted flavor. Right. But uh, that is something need to be changed in the future. Right. You think it'll change? And, and I have noticed uh, both in the United States and in uh, Europe when I go to some of these uh, top cafes, they will have both the darker and the lighter roast, but as people become more educated, and that's what we're trying to do with my show here, educating people about uh, coffee, and that if they start experiencing those lighter roasts, they will have a different and uh, more sophisticated appreciation of coffee, and if that's the case, oftentimes they choose these lighter roasts, is that right? Uh, yes, it is. Um, nowadays in the Scandinavian country, we have we can easy to find the uh, light roast coffee in the espresso. Right. So you actually put the uh, lighter roast also in the espresso machine. So if somebody wants just an espresso, a shot of espresso, they can get lighter roast uh, these days in many places. Is that right? Uh, yes, it is. Right. And then you, Anthony. What is your favorite coffee to drink? How do you like to drink coffee? Uh huh. So uh, what I like in the coffee is uh, the most favorite right now uh, is the coffee from Colombia, Narino. Mm. So um, and uh, I really very interesting. Uh, that's a very interesting coffee because they come out so nice acidity. Right. You can feel a little bit of. Uh, Raspberry acidity, right. and they have so sweet in a cup. Right, and you can taste of the sweetness when the coffee cooling down. Right. It's feeling like honey sweetness, and they create a very nice mouth feel in the cup, right. in your mouth. So uh, that, that's my favorite right now. And the thing that's uh, when I enjoy one cup of coffee, I will try to figure out what flavor I can find in the cup. Mm -hmm. So, so you, because it's uh, mm. much more interesting, isn't it? Or when you bring the dark roast coffee, basically you get like chocolate tea, right? Or, or maybe you get a burn test, and that's it. But right. in the specialty coffee, in the lighter roast coffee, you you can enjoy and you can find much more flavor in it. Right, and and then uh, do you, like if somebody wants uh, milk in their coffee, like let's say they're getting a cappuccino or a latte, and they order that. Uh, can you notice those different tastes with the lighter roast, even in those uh, coffees that have milk contained in them? Um, actually, um, that's a very interesting question because um, I used to work with like a lot of medium roast coffee, darker roast coffee, and a lighter roast of coffee, and all of them in in a different level roast of coffee. Uh, they they also create different uh, milk barrels coffee. So, uh, for example, when you drink one cup of cappuccino, uh, and you can see like in the darker roast of coffee, you feeling a little bit more heavier taste. Mm -hmm. You feel a little bit more body in the cup. You feel a little bit roasted flavor. Uh, but uh, in the light roast coffee, uh, when it go with milk, for example, uh, the one that I use right now at uh, a Kemitan cafe is uh, the Colombia coffee in mm -hmm. a little bit light roast coffee and when I test it it like raspberry in the espresso but when uh, it turned to the cappuccino it tastes like a blueberry come out so so even with the cappuccino even with the latte the lighter roast is going to have a, a, mo a more specific taste of the coffee bean as opposed to the roast is that right Yes, it is. Okay. And then uh, when people come into the cafe now, and uh, are more people ordering the darker or lighter roast, and how do you get people who are used to darker to try lighter? 
Oh, um, that's it. Uh, I not going to uh, tell with the people. You don't bring the dactroscopy. Let bring the lyroscopy because it's very difficult to the people to change their mind immediately. Right. Um, so everything you need to take time. And at right now, uh, what we do at uh, our cafe, so we using uh, one coffee, have medium roast coffee, and which is not not a little bit darker than the uh, light roast coffee. Right. And uh, another grinder, we have the light roast coffee. And sometimes we add the the customer. I try to explain with the customer. So um, today we have like a little bit like medium roast of coffee. Do you want to try this one or you want to try another one? So it would have a little bit more fruitiness. It's right. have a little bit higher acidity, but they have specific flavor coming out. Right. So, um, and at, by that way, I give for the customer the choice. They can choose what coffee they want to drink. Right. And, and, and maybe, I, you go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. And uh, by, by that way, um, the customer, sometimes, you know, like if the people drink one kind of coffee every day, they get it boring and they start to like hey do you know uh, do you have another coffee today right. so let's go ahead and try it right no, and it's, it's, after they ahead. try it they will see the difference right it's a, it, I, I must say it's a lot like wine I uh, somebody years ago people used to just drink the same type of table wine or whatever and then what happened was people became more sophisticated in their tastes and this wine is from this region or that region. There's slightly different tastes. And I think it's the same thing with coffee. And uh, Anthony uh, was kind enough when I was uh, at his cafe in Gothenburg, Sweden, at Alchemy, to uh, uh, show me uh, a number of things behind the counter about how the coffee is made and the different colors of the different beans and whatnot. And like many people, as I started drinking the lighter roast, I had to get used to it, but once you get used to it, it it is very interesting because there's many different possibilities, and and uh, that's certainly my preference now, the lighter roast because of uh, uh, learning a little bit more about it and trying. So I, I, I Anthony, would you rec what would you recommend if somebody goes into a cafe now, should they ask for a lighter roast if they want to try a lighter roast, what should they say to the barista? Uh huh. So. Um what I can advise to you is like um, when you get into the cafe, try to add your barista. So what they have in their cup, and they're going to explain for you what you can drink. Right. That's the best way to get into the uh, the cafe, I think. Right, and then and because the barista is the person that's actually making the delivery, and I should say, uh, in in making a good coffee, and Anthony taught me this. There's three things involved. One is the equipment that's used. One is the roaster, the person actually roasting the beans, making sure you get good beans. And the third is the uh, barista who delivers it. Uh, is that right, Anthony? Uh, yes, it is. And which is, your, think... which is your favorite part of that process? Do you prefer roasting or being a barista? Uh, I actually prefer the roasting. Because uh, at a barista, if you want to uh, serve the the best quality of coffee, you have to be have the good quality of roasted bean. So, uh, and the good quality of re uh, roasted bean, I used like in ingredients. If you have a good ingredients, so the barista can use their knowledge to create better cup of coffee. Yeah. So even a good barista cannot make good coffee if you have bad beans, right? And, uh, and, and, and uh, that's the job of the roaster, to make sure those beans are properly roasted and of high quality. Yes, he did. Right. And, okay, we have a couple of minutes left on the show. Anthony, uh, what would you like to be doing in the uh, coffee industry in the next uh, few years, next five or ten years? What would you like to see yourself doing? Uh -huh. So um, uh, right now I uh, really enjoy very much to working at the uh, Akimitan where I'm working in Nota Boy right now right. in Sweden. Uh, and I see myself uh, behind the 
uh-huh. when all every day when I working and uh, I talk to the customer and I really enjoyed it. Um, however, in the future, I believe that um, I can do something uh, better. I can share my knowledge and my uh, my passion with the coffee right. by the way that uh, uh, open the roastery and we're going to deliver the delivery more higher quality coffee to our customer. Right. It's an exciting time now in coffee because I think this uh, uh, this uh, what they call third wave of coffee, where the coffee is it's more specialized and uh, the source of the coffee is more important. And they have these single origins. All this stuff we'll get in on this series uh, I'm doing on coffee. Uh, that uh, that the uh, the there will be a greater sophistication in the people drinking the coffee, and we'll see the quality of coffee uh, uh, changing over the next uh, few years. And it's it's an exciting time, and and uh, uh, coffee uh, brings a lot of happiness to people. And recent studies show that, and I've read these studies. Uh, people that drink coffee, they say live longer, so I'm all for that. Uh, how much coffee do you drink a day, Anthony? Oh, I think that's about uh, six cup of coffee today. Oh, fantastic. I have about <laughs> half that much. Uh, but, but, and I think it's different for everybody. For some people, one cup. For some people, two cups, three cups, four, and it goes up from there. So, Anthony, yeah. thank you so very much for taking the time to come on my show today, and we wish you uh, great success. And if anybody, I encourage people to visit the country of Sweden. It's a beautiful country. My wife is there, from there originally, so I get to go there. Uh, uh, Anthony mentioned uh, the town where he is, and uh, I pronounce it Guthenberg. Uh, how do the Swedes say uh, Guthenberg? Uh, they say Göteborg. Göteborg. And uh, and uh, the name of the cafe in Sweden, which I really highly recommend. I've been to probably 160 yeah. cafes in the last few months, and this is absolutely one of my favorite. I would call it uh, in English alchemy or alchemist, and you would pronounce it in Sweden how? Akemiten. Okay, and then you can always contact me directly, and I can get that information. But uh, and uh, but Scandinavia, a great great area for many things, and now, now including coffee. So, Anthony, thank you so very much for taking the time to come on. Thank you very much, Dennis. You're very listening. nice to talk with you. Great. Yeah. You've been listening to KRUULP 100.1 FM, uh, my show Speaking Freely, and again, my guest today, Anthony Nguyen, uh, originally from Vietnam and now living in Gothenburg, Sweden. Thank you so much.